Welcome back, Table Talk Nation! What's up, guys? It's Andrew here with Table Talk, a board game channel for literally anyone. That means if you are a massive board game nerd like me or just a casual fan looking to pick up a few new game recommendations for either you or somebody else. We talk about only dope games here, and we are talking about the dopest, the greatest games of all time. Top 10, all time. Including my Mount Rushmore and my number one. All of the above is included in today's episode. So, continue watching if you want some dope recommendations for the contest of last video. I'll announce the winner in the comments below. With all that being said, let's get to this list. I made this list over a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and so a lot has changed. One thing has changed in that a brand new game has breached our top 10. That is my number 10 game of all time, HeroScape. That's right, Blast from the Past, found in early 2000s Toys R Us's all across the country. This was an insanely affordable game for what you got. It had pre-painted miniatures, awesome 3D terrain that you could stack and build custom battlefields, and miniatures and warriors from all across human history, fantasy, and sci-fi for all under 30 bucks. Back in the early 2000s, <laughs> plastic has got more expensive, so now if you want to pick up one of these sets, it's going to cost you around 100 bucks. But this game is so much fun as it is just a tactical skirmish light game. If you don't know what that means, it means you're moving around military figures and chucking dice to attack and defend. All of your figures have unique powers, but it is way simpler than you would expect for this kind of game. I love building all sorts of different armies, whether it be Spider-Man, George Washington, and the Men in Black, versus some ancient Roman archers a gladiator, and a grizzly bear. Who knows in this game? It can go anywhere with the army building and the maps that you build. You can build a castle, a cave, lake, whatever. You can even throw Bigfoot in there. This game is one of a kind. It's a blast. It's a lot of fun. If you can find it for cheap, I encourage you to pick it up for that tactical skirmish game where you have a bunch of units, but incredibly simple with still a bit of strategy, a bit of luck, a lot of fun. That is HeroScape. My number 10 game of all time. Number nine, another new game. Yeah, that's right. Disney Villainous. I don't know how this game didn't make my top 30 last year. I'm going to be honest, but it has risen a lot for me. I'm going to be clear. Only play this game if you are a Disney fan, number one. And if you only play it at two, maybe three. Three if everyone knows what they're doing. The problem is on the box, it says two to six, which is a blade line. Because I played it with six and it was awful. Don't do that. Don't even play it with five. I would argue don't even play it with four. But this game, if you play it at two or three, is a quick, fast-paced, asymmetric, card-driven experience. What does that mean? That means that every single villain that you can play as plays differently. Same abilities, same actions, in a sense, your deck works generally the same, but it's awesome because you get to see how that villain works differently every single time. Or you can just go back to your favorites and play them again and again and learn new strategies. What's awesome about this game is it brings those movie moments, the quotes, to life as your cards, both the cards you're using to achieve your villainous plot and the cards your opponents will be using on you of the heroes and the good guys in the story lead to incredible moments. Like I love playing the queen. She's literally poisoning everybody, every single dwarf, Snoopy, Dra Drowsy, Daisy, Blowy, Doc, I don't know, all of them and all try to poison Snow White. So as the queen, you use power to brew up a bunch of potions, whereas Prince John, you're just trying to use those power for money. Every villain works differently. An awesome experience if you love Disney. My number nine from Ravensburger, Disney Villainous. My number eight favorite game of all time is Root. Down from five last year, this game brings that love of Redwall Watership down. Any fantasy game where a mice is freaking swinging a sword and a badger's got a mace. It's awesome. You got animal warfare in a fantasy woodland. The problem is, it's insanely complicated. <laughs> and it's also even more insanely complicated because every faction works completely different. You almost have to learn this game four times, and that's only for the base four factions. You can add a bunch more. But this game represents a game that brings you an experience unlike any other because of those different factions, because of the world. Do you want to be the dastardly cats who have like buildings and armies everywhere? Do you want to be the secret Woodland Alliance underground that's slowly building up to break through? It's a lot of fun. If you want to get into a game like this, you're going to have to find a devoted group. Probably learn it on the app, but once you do get into it, it leads to incredible moments. Like my friend being the traitor otters that suddenly created a giant militia and rolled like a ball through almost the entire 
So moments like those that make me love Rude, even though it's down from five, it's just really hard to get to the table, especially with my friend group where it's a lot of intro and party gamers. Maybe one day I'll pray Rude more. But until then, it's my number eight of all time from Leader Games, Rude. The number seven favorite game of all time is a Breath of the Wild literally became a board game. It's open world map, you're traveling the seas, you can literally do anything and read these story passages as your crew of shippers, sailors, travel around fantasy seas and all kinds of wacky stuff happens. It is from Lion Locket and Red Raven Games. One of my favorite publishers, he has awesome fantasy artwork and fantasy worlds and it combines a lot of storytelling. What's great about this game is there's literally literally no rails you can go wherever you can do whatever you can go rescue a kid drowning in like a cursed sea cave and then find an ancient mind temple like under the waves who knows fight minotaurs you never know in this game leaves awesome moments it's down from four last year once again because like root it's hard to table i don't like playing games by myself so it's a lot to ask another person or two to like do a 14 hour experience it just doesn't happen it happened once because of that one play, it's my number seven favorite game of all time, Sleeping Gods from Red Raven Games. Number six, buy this game. You can literally play with anyone. You're gambling on camels. My number six game of all time, up from 13 last year, is Camel Up. I have created entire inside jokes with a variety of men that have all requested this game now for their bachelor party. None of which were board game fans. I had a father approach me and say, how did you get my son to to put this game on his registry. It's magic. All you gotta tell people is you're gambling on camels racing. You can't beat it. There's crazy camels going backwards, camels stack on top of each other. The best thing is you don't have a certain camel. You can bet on any of them, all of them, or double down. And that leads to awesome moments. A lot of hilarious fun, mishaps, and a great game from Eggert Spiel that is Camel Up. My number five favorite game of all time, up from one spot at six last time, this is from Fantasy Flight Games Cosmic Encounter. This game is nuts. Literally all it is, is you invade planets randomly and everyone has a crazy alien power. Everything is, is up to the people at the table. How you play the cards, how you create alliances. You say, oh, my friend's character's broken. All right, just gang up on him. <laughs> and then when that person has almost no ships anywhere, then use him to use against your friend that's about to win. This game has amazing moments, tons of table talk, tons of trash, crazy negotiations, betrayals, and backstabs, all of which are aspects of games I love. And that makes Cosmic Encounter a crazy experience unlike any other, and my number five favorite game of all time. If you couldn't tell already, I love theme, I love storytelling, and I love interaction. All these combined for my fourth favorite game of all time, new to the list, and that is Zombicide. Zombicide is literally you and a crew of survivors. You're surviving against waves and waves and waves and waves of zombies in a variety of scenarios, literally hopping in a cop car and just mowing those suckers down. You're getting golden AK-47s, Molotov cocktails, grenades. Lord knows in this game, and half of the survivors are kids. This game is nuts. There's a Western version, a sci-fi, a fantasy, and now Marvel, but my favorite right now is just the modern second edition of common classic zombie setting i love these moments and these games just because of the stories they create i have my friend who has this whole character of amy she's useless she never helps at all but it always leads to amazing stories when she actually does it's an inside joke more than anything but this game has created stories like those with my friends and that's what makes it my number four favorite game of all time from one of my favorite publishers simon also from simon my number three favorite game of all time down from my number one favorite game of all time. <gasps> That's right, it has fallen. And that is Marvel United. Now to be fair, you'll see with my top two, this is my favorite normal game of all time. And this game I love because it is so simple, it's cooperative and it's Marvel. At this point, there are so many expansions and promo packs and stretch goal characters that you can play like literally any Marvel character in the universe. That dude that appeared for like five comics in the 90s, he's probably there. I'm a Marvel fan. I don't even know like a third of the characters. But I love it because there's so many scenarios to play. Every villain plays differently in this game. Every hero has different decks. But it is dirt simple. You can play this with a child. 
But I always play with my gamer friends and we find so much strategy and fun in planning and battling against all the different villains. You can play against Mojo who's trying to turn you into a TV show or you can turn into Magneto who's trying to turn all the mutants into evil people. Once again, incredible moments. I remember there was four of us that went against Thanos, the Infinity Gauntlet, a five game campaign. We brought the most stacked, overpowered Marvel team in the universe. Adam Warlock, Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, Howard the freaking duck. And my friend was taking a crap when we beat Thanos and we could hear him screaming from the living room. That is the moments this game creates. Just awesome moments, especially if you're a Marvel fan or a fan of light cooperative games. There's tons of expansions. Go get them because they add a lot of variety. Some are more expensive than others. Find the ones you can. Get this game. Marvel United, my third favorite game of all time. Second favorite game of all time, also new to the list, Blood on the Clock Tower from the Pandemonium Institute. This game certified banger it has so many different roles it takes the classic formula of werewolf mafia resistance secret hitler any of those games and cranks it up on insane levels because in this game you die everyone keeps playing you can divide and talk in separate rooms you can whisper you can text you can form alliances you can betray everyone has a role and in information and abilities and yet there is lies and misinformation everywhere. If you can find this game, it's super expensive. It's hard to get, but pick it up if you love social deduction. It's going to seem like a big teach. If you can learn how to teach it simply, though, almost anyone can get into this game eventually. And it has led to amazing moments. Too many to count. That could be a top 10 on its own. One of my favorites was recently my younger brother just spat blatant lies <laughs> for about five minutes, but there's so much craziness in this game, everyone believed him. This game has moments like those, and that's what makes it my number two favorite game of all time, Blood on the Clock Tower. So what's my number one? Well, before I say that, I just wanna thank you guys for watching so much. I make these videos for fun. I know they're not the best edited, best presented, or best made, but I just enjoy that people watch them, comment on them. I never expect anyone to watch them. So I thank you guys for watching them. Hopefully in the future, I'm going to get some different content out. I hope to bring friends of mine. I know it's more boring to have one person. I'm just going to be honest. So I want to bring people on, do collaborative top tens or challenges or discussions. I want to do reviews. I got an overhead camera. So I'm going to try to do reviews, overviews, keep them short and simple. That's kind of the niche I'm going for. And hopefully I can appear on other channels more. I'm on Dice Tower for Favorite Game Friday, most Fridays. I just got on OFPG for OFPG Voices. I've been mentioned on the Table Knots, and so just check out all those places. I just want to collaborate more, get more out there, and just hear more of the opinions of others, be able to share mine. So, with all that being said, my number one favorite game of all time is up from three last year. That is King's Dilemma. This game from Horrible Games is amazing. It brings Game of Thrones to the tabletop. It is a 15 game legacy experience unlike any other. If you can get a group of four or five to play this game consistently, you are all going to represent houses with hidden agendas, motives, backstories, and you're gonna create these incredible tales of the history of your civilization. Going on journeys to explore and having slaves run the ships and then have them ride and lose your entire navy. Figuring out how to create gold, but it's made out of human blood, so do you take that risk? Figuring out how to stop and contain a war that is threatening your entire country. Having a king literally go insane and gain awareness of the game you're playing. All of this and more has happened in King's Dilemma. If you can get into it, if you like that idea, check it out. It is the greatest game experience I've ever had. Sadly, it's a legacy game, so I will never have it again. But if you can, I'm sure it might be close to your number one favorite game of all time. With all that being said, guys, catch you guys on the flip side.